Hey guys, this is MacHeads101, and today I'm going to be talking about three terminal commands, xargs, cut, and sort. These commands are really great for dealing with large lists of file names or strings, so I think you'll be glad that you learned them. So what I'm going to do is show each command in isolation, give some examples of its usage, stuff like that, and then I'm going to move on to uh, give some more in-depth examples of how you could actually use these commands together, because they play really nicely together, and I want to give some examples of that. But first, let's get started, and I'm just going to get started by showing you the sort command. So I have this file on my desktop here, and it contains, you know, just a couple lines of text, and we could, we could also read it through terminal with cat. And what I want to do is I want to sort it alphabetically. So to do this, we can just pipe the contents of lines.txt into the sort command. So we just do cat lines.txt, the vertical bar for a pipe, and then sort. And this outputs the sorted file. So you can see another sentence comes first, it starts with A. This is a sentence comes last, it starts with T, so it's like later in the alphabet. And already, this is pretty useful. You know, if we wanted to save the sorted file to, uh, the sorted lines to another file, we could just pipe it into uh, line sorted.txt, perhaps. And uh, if I drag it over to this display, you can see this actually contains the sorted version. So already this is pretty useful. You could, you could see how you might apply this. But there's a lot more that the sort command can do. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete uh, line sorted. Something else we can do is uh, we can reverse the order of everything that's been sorted. So maybe I want it in descending alphabetical order instead of ascending alphabetical order. So I can just pass the dash R flag and that'll do it. And you can see it's in the opposite order as it was before. Another thing that sort is actually capable of doing, which you might not expect, is removing duplicates. So you can see uh, this, sen this is a sentence appears twice. And uh, maybe I want to just remove one of those instances. Well, when a list is sorted, it's really easy to remove duplicates because the duplicates are all right next to each other, so you can even visually remove them. Uh, so sort just has that built in. You can do sort-u um, for unique, and it will remove duplicates. And you can see this is a sentence only appears one time. And we could, of course, combine that with dash r and get in the opposite order. So that's something else you can do with sort that's pretty cool. And these have just been two really simple flags. There's one last thing that I think is worth knowing how to use the sort command for. So if we look at lines.txt, you'll notice not only is a line completely repeated, uh, as we saw with the dash u, but there's actually three lines that start with candy is, uh, these three lines right here. And when we're removing duplicates, these three lines are counted as different lines because, you know, after the candy is, they're different. But maybe in, in some cases, when we're removing duplicates, we only want to look at the first two words, and so we would count candy as tasty and candy as bad for you as duplicates. And this will actually have a practical application that I'll show you later in this video. So um, how do we get sort to just look at the first two words of the line without looking at the rest of it uh, when removing duplicates? Well, all we have to do is our old sort dash u, and we're just going to add dash k one comma two. What this does is it tells sort that when it's sorting or removing duplicates, it should start by looking at the first word and read all the way up to the second word. And in this case, it's kind of silly because they're right next to each other. But you can imagine us doing something like k2, comma 4, and it would start looking at the second word and read the third and the fourth word, something like that. Um, but in this case, we're doing 1, comma 2. And uh, so sort will just look at the first two words when removing duplicates. So there's only one candy is line now, and the other two were removed. But this only works if the words you're interested in are separated by spaces. You know, uh, it only it knows what a word is because I used spaces. Candy space is space tasty, right? But if I have a different file, and instead of spaces, there's underscores everywhere, well, then this command is not going to work. You can see there's still three candy is lines because it thinks that this is all one word. It doesn't know that underscores are a magical character for separating words. So uh, to tell it what a space is, basically what the, the delimiter is, we can add a dash t flag, and in this case, it'll be underscore. And that just tells it uh, words are separated by underscores. And still, we have this dash k thing telling it look at the first two words only. 
And now you can see it did what it did before for the, uh, for the spaces. So this has just been a really quick overview of what you can do with sort. It is by far not exclusive. You know, it, I didn't go over all the options. And in fact, if you want to sort by something other than alphabetical order, you want to sort by date, something like that, there's options for that. And you can find more information if you do man sort and uh, scroll around. You can just see all the options that you can do. Now I'd like to move on to talking about the cut command. This command basically lets you just extract a certain part of every line in standard input. So say I had a file with a bunch of sentences and I wanted a new file that just has the second word in each of those sentences. Well, we could use the cut command for that. We would just cut out the second word. So I'm just going to give a couple examples and I think they'll make it pretty clear how this command works and what you can do with it. So let's go ahead and just review what's in our lines.txt file. Let's say we want to cut, uh, we just want to get the first five characters from each line, and that's all we want to output. Well, we can pipe that into cut dash C for character, and now a range of characters we want, in this case, one through five. You know, we want to start at the first character, go all the way up to the fifth character. And this will do what we want. It'll give us uh, the first five characters of every single line in the standard input. Now, I want to talk a little bit about this one through five thing we gave for the range. It's a little different than the sort dash K flag because that took one comma five, something like that. Um, ranges are actually a little interesting because in this case, I've given a start and an end index, but actually, uh, and I, you know, I could do like two to five, something like that, but I can actually leave out either end of this. So I could say two dash and it basically means start at character two and read all the way until the end of the line. So we'll have the entire line minus the first character. And I could do it the other way and do dash five and that would just say, just read up to character five starting at the beginning of the line. Um, and this is of course the same as just doing one through five. And I can also just specify a single character. Like if I want the third letter of every line, something like that would do. So that's just the idea of a range. It can be, you know, number dash another number, just dash number, number dash, or just a number. Now, uh, nothing is complete unless we can deal with words, basically. So once again, if we look, maybe we just want the second word of each of these lines, something like that. Well, unlike the sort command, cut doesn't automatically assume that words are separated by spaces or something like that. Um, so we use dash F to specify, um, in this case it stands for field, uh, just think of that as a word, and this will tell it, read the third word, so I guess we actually want to read uh, the second word. Um, and now let's think about uh, what our delimiter is. In this case, words are separated by spaces. So to tell it that, we do dash D, and then the delimiter, the thing separating it, in this case, it's a space, and we can't just type a space because that would just mean nothing, so we have to do it in quotes. Um, just because a space is just, uh, in, in the shell, a space just separates arguments. So we have to put it in quotes to indicate that we really want the space there. And now you can see, wow, I didn't actually realize all of these lines start with, or have is as the second word, except for one of them, but that's pretty cool. So uh, we get the second word. We could also get the first two words. We could get, starting from the second word onward, we get two to three, something like that. So this has just been how to use cut to cut with characters or words. There's a lot of other options you can use. You, of course, you can use dash B for bytes instead of characters. Um, so you can, of course, have a look at the man page and read over all the options. So last but not least, I'm gonna be talking about the xargs command. This command uh, basically just lets you take all of the lines or words from standard input and pass them as arguments to some other command. So to give a really simple example, I've created a file on my desktop called touched files. And what I wanna do is create an empty file in here for every line in lines1.txt. So I want a file called this is a sentence, another sentence, candy is tasty, candy is bad for you, uh, I want to file with each of those names, and I could manually do this by, you know, doing touch, space, and then the first file name, the second file name, etc. You can see that would create all the files. I'll just delete them. 
but using xargs, it's a little easier. So I can cat the file, and I can just pipe that into xargs touch. And what this will do is it will run the touch command, and it will pass all of the lines from lines.txt into that, you know, as arguments to touch. So I just run that, and you can see it created one file for each of the lines in, uh, in the uh, lines1.txt. Anyway, so this is, you know, the most basic way to use xargs, just as a way to get a bunch of lines to be arguments to some command like touch. But we can actually use xargs in cases when you might not have even expected to need anything fancy. So to illustrate why xargs is actually extremely useful in a lot of cases, I've created a folder on my desktop here with about 40,000 files in it, and I'm not going to open it with Finder because Finder doesn't like that kind of thing. But I'll go ahead and cd into it and run an ls. This, this folder contains a bunch of files whose names start with A and a bunch of files whose names start with Z, a couple other ones whose names start with like W or Y or something like that. But So it's mostly these, these uh, two categories, starting with A or starting with Z. And let's say I want to do something pretty basic. I want to delete all the files whose names start with the letter A. Well, normally you would do something like this, I, you know, rm a star. This just means remove all the files who match this pattern, a followed by anything else. And the problem with this is when you run a command like this, your shell, in this case I'm using bash, will turn a star into a list of all the files that match that pattern. In this case, probably about 10,000 files. And it'll pass all of those files as arguments to rm. So rm will get 10,000 arguments or something like that. And the problem is Unix and Linux actually have a limit for the number of arguments a command can get. So if I run this, it says uh, argument list is too long. So I can't delete all the files whose names start with A like this because it just requires too many arguments and I just can't do it. So I need some alternative way to do it. And the answer, of course, is going to be xargs because that's what I'm talking about. So we can find, we can just get it to print out, we can get a list of all the files whose names start with A pretty easily. We do find dot dash name a star, something like that. And uh, you can see that just will print out all the files we want. And in fact, we can count how many there are now by piping it into wc dash l. So 19,000. So that actually is about half of all the total files in this folder. So we get this list of files, and now it's the perfect thing for xargs, right? Because xargs can just pass each of these into rm. So we can just pipe that into xargs rm. And the nice thing that xargs will do is it won't try to pass all of the things to xargs at once because they don't fit. They don't all fit. They can't all be parameters, you know, arguments to rm at the same time. What it'll do is it'll chunk them. It'll break them up into smaller chunks of arguments and run rm multiple times with, with uh, some subset of these each time. And the result is that we can delete all these files. So if we run this, it's going to take a little while. Uh, and as you can see here, it'll say each command it's running. You can see it's running multiple rm commands, and each one gets multiple arguments. But this is just an idea of how you could delete a massive amount of files at once. You could also use it to, you know, I don't know, rename them, something like that. So now if we do an ls, you can see none of it starts with a. So that's pretty great. One thing that's a little tricky is figuring out how to use xargs with commands that, you know, you want to pass certain arguments to. So uh, let's use move as an example. I have a folder inside this folder called w. Right now it's empty. And I want to move all of the files whose names start with w into this folder. The naive way would be this, you know, move star w star into w. Well, I can't do that because there's too many files whose names start with W. We have the argument list problem. But it's actually not obvious how to do this with xargs like I've just shown you. Because uh, if we, we can get all the files the same way we did before with find. But how do we pipe this? You know, we can't just do xargs move. Because that'll pass all these files as arguments to move. But how does it know about the W directory that we want to move it into, you know, move stuff into? Well, really we want, when, when xargs run something for one of these files, we want it to put the file name here, you know, and then we want W to be after it. 
So we want it to put the argument in between mv and w. And actually, we can pretty much just do this. So xargs has a dash i flag. We give it a string. And uh, in the command, it'll look for that string we gave it and replace it with whatever argument it wants to pass. So I, I could have made this anything. I could call it, I could call it a monkey if I want to. And I'll just change this to monkey. So it basically says replace monkey with the argument. And uh, this will move all of the files the, whose name start with w into the w directory. If I run it, you can see it's working, on, working really hard. And this time it's only passing, it looks like one file, and it's between the mv and the w, so it's working really well. And once it's done, I can just uh, do an ls in w so you can see. And if I ls in the main directory, now nothing starts with the w because it's all been moved. So that was basically just uh, an intro to xargs. And of course, as always, check out the man page for more information. So now I just want to move on to a couple practical applications of the things we just learned. I want to start by uh, making something that goes through this large directory with a bunch of files. And I want it to tell me how many unique files there are, how many files there are where there's no other file in that directory with the same exact contents. Uh, and this is actually not that easy because, you know, you might have a, uh, you know, for instance, a folder with 20 million or, you know, a million images, and you want to delete all the duplicate images or something like that. You know, how do you do that in a reasonable amount of time? Well, one way to do it is what we're going to be using is by hashing the files first. So if I hash um, a file with the md5 command, md5-r, and then a file name, and I'll do a different one. How about this? What this does is it basically gives a code that uniquely identifies the contents of that file. So if two files have a different code, they're definitely different. And uh, we're going to be using this in conjunction with sort and xargs to count how many unique files there are. So how are we going to do this? Well, first off, we need the MD5 hashes of all the files in here. So um, I'm just going to be using xargs, find dot, um, and then I will pipe that into md5-r. And so this will just compute the hash, the md5 hash of all the files in this directory, you know, a unique idea identifier for all the files. We get something like this. And I'm just going to kill it. So you can see this, the output basically looks like you got a unique identifier and a file name. And if there's any duplicates in this list, they'll have the same unique identifier. So I, I don't see any off the top of my head, but you know, we would have something else that says 94023 and then some different file name somewhere further up in here. So uh, now we can start using our sort command. And what we want to do is find the unique entries in this giant output that are just unique in their hash. The hash is the first word of the output. The file name is the second word. So we can just pipe this into sort dash k one comma one for the first word and then dash u for unique. And so now um, it'll run and it's going to have to wait until the whole running process is over. And now actually, of course, all the hashes are sorted, as you can tell. And now there should be no duplicates. And now finally, we want to count this. So let's pipe it into wc dash l. And this will just tell us how many files with unique hashes there are in this directory. And it's going to have to run. We got 16,000 unique files. And if we just want to count the files in general, we can get rid of this whole md5 and sort thing. There's actually 18,000 files. So there's a lot of duplicates. There's about 2,000 duplicate files in this directory. And we found that just by running md5, sorting the result by hash, and removing the duplicates from that, and just counting the output. But now say we want to do something with each of the unique files. So we want to run a command for every single uh, for every single file, but we don't want to run it twice if there's, you know, two copies of that file or something like that. Uh, what we really want is we want a list of all the files, but we don't want the hashes to the side of them anymore. So if you remember um, this right here, it will have no duplicates, but uh, it'll still output something with the hash on the left and the file name on the right. So to get rid of the hash on the left, 
we can use our good old pal cut. We can do cut and uh, uh, we're going to use a delimiter of space because that's what separates these two. And uh, we just want the, well, we want everything after the first word. So like that, we want all the fields, all the words to and on. And if I run this, it'll run. And I'll get an output of files that are, you know, within this directory. But there are no, none of these files will have the same contents as any other file in the list. So now I could, theoretically, I could pipe this to xargs and do whatever I want with this list of files. Um, so this is just a really practical use case when uh, I, I actually use this occasionally uh, to just, you know, manipulate a large list of files. Uh, and the three commands, xarg, sort, and cut, actually work really well together and usually find is involved too or something, you know, if you're working with files. But anyway, I hope this was enlightening. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and goodbye.